Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and have a small office in Milwaukee. And I'm here to tell you today um, to do an update, actually, on the ginkgo biloba tree. You see it's, uh, it's fall, it's November, and there's a hint of yellow popping up on the tree, which is my cue to harvest the ginkgo leaves that I need for the medicine I make. Um, and that is in another video. You can look that video up. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different since it's my yearly harvest of the ginkgo. I am also, I like to take a moment to look at the literature and uh, see what kind of science has come up um, in the last little while. And I found a really great review article um, that discusses just the wide range of research on how ginkgo relates specifically to inflammation and uh, it's a pretty good one so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over there and pick the leaves off the tree and I'm gonna voice over a discussion about this interesting review article I'd like to share with you guys so maybe you'll learn something and to get a little bit of uh, harvest enjoyment um, see you around and okay, it looks like I'm getting ready to go and pick the leaves off that tree. And since this is a repeat video, I've already done this topic before, kind of basically the same thing. So I, this time I'm going to voice over instead and talk about this real interesting review article I found called The Effects of Ginkgo Biloba on Diseases Related to Oxidative Stress. And this is uh, authored by Gabriela Achete de Souza and she's in the Department of Biochemistry and Pharmacology in the School of Medicine in the University of Marilia in Mar uh, Marilia, Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil. So this is a Brazilian review article and basically what they did is they wanted to investigate the effects of ginkgo biloba on diseases related to oxidative stress and um, basically how uh, ginkgo biloba can regulate the expression of antioxidant enzymes um, in your body and in, also can reduce oxygen, re reactive oxygen, oxygen, <laughs> it can reduce reactive oxygen and nitrogen species and those um, can peroxidize lipids. It, so it's basically talking about the anti-inflammatory properties um, of ginkgo biloba and how it can inhibit the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, and they used uh, in this study, in these studies, they studied, they went through the literature and found quite a number of studies and were able to um, look at a variety of animal models and even some human studies and they found that ginkgo biloba has uh, positive effects on brain damage, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, heart disease, liver um, and kidney damage. Uh, it can be positive for diabetes, metabolic syndrome, um, ischemic colitis, and a lot of times this is due to compounds such as uh, the bilobalide, ugh, these are big words, <laughs> isoremnetina, quercetin, camphorol, and ginkolides A, B, and C. Those are kind of what a lot of these studies had looked into. So it's pretty interesting what they found here. In this review, they used uh, Medline and PubMed and NIH and other databases to look at studies from March, from May 2013 to October 2019. Um, and it was basically their search was looking for diseases related to oxidative stress and studies that were looking at that. And in the end, they found and decided to do the results for 54 studies that they found. And most of these were performed on mice, but there were some human studies as well. And all of these research studies were from universities and healthcare centers. So pretty good sourcing. Um, through the literature to find the information for this review. So, oh, interesting facts about ginkgo biloba. 
Ginkgo biloba belongs to the Ginkgo ACA. Ginkgo. Ah, I hate this word. Ginkgo biloba belongs to the Ginkgo ACA family, and it's one of the oldest living species on the planet. And the leaves and seeds of these plants have been used for medicinal purposes in China for centuries. Um, initially, they were using it mostly for asthma and digestive problems, but uh, it's come over here since the 60s and it's now being used in Europe and Asia and all over the world and uh, they've found a bunch of research on it and they've submitted it into some really good stuff that I'd like to share with you guys. It's going to be kind of long-winded, but um, let's see. One thing about ginkgo biloba, it's extract, it's uh, well known for its neuroprotective activity so it's often used for memory improvement and this they're finding is probably definitely related to its antioxidant properties and the regulation of oxidative stress in even your brain tissues and nerves so that's really interesting um, oxidative stress can lead to um, your fats perox peroxidation of your fats it can lead to oxidation of your proteins DNA mutation, damaged nerve cells, and um, general neurological disorders from too much oxidative stress they found. And so this ginkgo biloba helping to remove that oxidative stress can really alleviate some of these pathologies that go along with that. Now one of the great things that this review article did was it took all these different um, studies and it made a chart kind of with the results that they found. So maybe I can go through that a little bit quicker. So they're talking about I'm looking at this table of diseases related to oxidative stress and inflammation. So now I'm just going to talk about different diseases and what these different studies kind of found. Just going over the literature a little bit. So for neurodegenerative diseases, this study on rats and also some some human studies on people who are older than 75 years old, they found that there was a, using the standardized ginkgo biloba extract increased the mitochondrial functions and had a protective effect due to action as a free radical eliminator. So people had actually improvements on the Wechsler, <laughs> Wechsler scale of memory and it improved cognitive and motor functions. So this might be something you want to use and they're suggesting it needs to be looked into for treating Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, so the next uh, next part of the table talks about brain damage. This These studies were all in rats and the research found that the ginkgo biloba had a protective role against uh, the loss of um, oxygen and blood flow in the brain, basically cerebral ischema. And it was also helpful studying, or I said stimulating angiogenesis, so um, increasing the growth. So next we're going to talk about the heart and myocardial injury. These studies were done on rats. <laughs> Yeah, and those are some dogs. Okay, so we're back to talking about myocardial injury. And these studies were done on rats, and basically they found that there was a significant reduction in cardiac enzymes, um, and the heart attack areas were significantly decreased, and they had much better glucose, LDL, cholesterol, and triglyceride rates than animals that had not been given the ginkgo biloba extract. Uh, the next studies summated were about pulmonary disease, and these were also in rats. And basically they found that there was improvement in, in pulmonary lesions. They took these rats and they made lesions into their pulmonary system. Through, um, and that these lesions improved quicker and had better signs and symptoms of when given a standardized ginkgo biloba extract. Uh, the next thing they talk about is aortic rupture. These studies were on rats, and basically the ginkgo biloba application prevented um, some of the aortic rupture 
in cases of ab abdominal aortic aneurysms. So it showed a protective effect against abdominal aortic aneurysms. And that kind of also suggests a general um, blood vessel protective effect. So that's pretty cool. A lot of times with rats, unfortunately, they, they cause problems and then see what helps. Um, probably something like that. If you read the this whole um, article, it has a very big, long section where it describes each of the studies in much more detail. But I'm just going quickly over the um, the conclusions in the chart because it's very wordy otherwise. This is the less wordy version. Okay, so on to neuronal lesions, and these were also done in rats, and they found that when they caused uh, lesions by taking away the oxygen, um, that they get, the ones with the ginkgo biloba had improvements of these lesions and had less, less uh, popped cells, basically. And they found an increase in SOD and GSH activity and uh, a variety of other markers. So it just said it can protect um, your brain cells against loss of oxygen, and it can generally improve cognitive function by improving lesions. So that's great to know for people having problems with that. Let's see. The next one's about the blood-brain barrier dysfunction. It was also done in rats that were tortured with neurotoxic chemicals and they found that the ginkgo biloba was able to stabilize and maintain the integrity of the blood-brain barrier so the rats had less problems when they were given ginkgo biloba and and something that was neurotoxic okay so the next thing is talking about hypertension due to kidney damage another one with rats that were um, yeah had some problems given to them and what they found is the ginkgo biloba, you know, it had a, it really helped reduce the systolic, diastolic, and medium blood pressure, and generally improved lipid profiles, levels of GSH, uh, expression of ENOS. These results showed that ginkgo biloba protects against hypertension um, that's caused by kidney damage. So it would also possibly be good to use alongside with losartan and simvastatin in, to enhance the effects, make it more effective. Let's see the next page of this chart. And we're talking about diabetes, diabetes mellitus. And this was studies in both humans with diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and also studies in rats. And basically what they found was that the ginkgo biloba extract helps decrease body weight um, improves the triglycerides in both diabetes 1 and 2, and it also improves, um, let's see, diabetes. Oh, here they took the rats and they induced diabetes mellitus through some pancreatic lesions and some toxins, and they found that it was the rats that had been given the ginkgo biloba had improved um, so basically, this talks about how ginkgo biloba probably has anti-inflammatory effects directly onto the pancreas, and that can help reduce blood glucose and diabetes minus one um, that's been caused by this toxin. Also, in diabetes mellitus two, um, induced by a high-fat diet, they also found the ginkgo biloba helped better blood sugars even with that problem. So the next one is metabolic syndrome, and this was done in humans and rats. These studies found that um, the ginkgo biloba extract helped reduce blood sugar during fasting, um, helped with uh, body mass index, serum levels of leptin, total cholesterol, um, glycolated hemoglobin, LDLs, just they found all around a lot of good improvements um, that using ginkgo biloba could really help improve blood sugar, um, body fat, your lipid profiles, the general inflammatory markers. So they suggest that ginkgo biloba could possibly be beneficial to avoiding um, 
or preventing some metabolic imbalances and uh, progressing insulin resistance caused by obesity. So that was pretty interesting. I never really thought of ginkgo biloba for diabetes and mellitus, diabetes mellitus or metabolic syndrome, but I guess it makes sense when you're reducing um, oxidation. Um, you're really helping things out all over. Oh, and here we're talking about now kidney damage. And these studies in rats, they found that um, when they caused kidney damage to these rats, that the ones that got the ginkgo biloba had less inflammatory markers and less, uh, less cell death. So they're showing that that ginkgo had a protective effect on, um, on the inflammatory induced kidney damage in these poor little rats. Uh, the next one they're talking about testicular damage in rats, in rats with hypertension. <laughs> yeah. And oddly enough, ginkgo biloba improves testicular damage and led to a rise in testosterone levels. Um, so they're saying that ginkgo might be protective and therapeutic in the male reproductive tract, especially if the male reproductive tract has been influenced by toxicities. Um, here they used electromagnetic radiation and aluminum. And uh, also, <laughs> yeah, they did some nasty things to these poor little rats. But in any case, the ones with ginkgo biloba were more fertile <laughs> than the the rat's not given ginkgo biloba. Colorectal cancer, another study from rats, and these showed anti-tumor activity. So they suggested in these studies that it could prevent um, the progression of colorectal cancer. So that would be really great if that could be used as a preventative. So many wonderful things this anti-inflammatory ginkgo biloba is doing. Acute ischemic colitis. And this was studies that looking at hospitalized humans with ischemic colitis, and they found that ginkgo biloba had a protective effect against this. Um, it can also have ther therapeutic potential. And um, yeah, they definitely suggest trying to use ginkgo biloba to prevent future um, ischemic colitis. Cataracts, the studies were done on rats, and they found that ginkgo biloba helped treat cataracts and reduce, um, reduced the formation of cataracts a little bit, slowed down the progression of cataracts in these rats. So that's fascinating. And let's see, one more page here, just a few more. Um, so another thing, ginkgo biloba, they studied depression and these studies were all rat studies, and they found that in these poor little depressed rats that there was an antidepressive effect of ginkgo biloba, and uh, they also found that it was able to reverse problems with glutamate and aspartate metabolism and reduce oxidative stress to lipids and the same stuff we were talking about. I guess that actually helped with depressed rats. I'm not sure how you tell um, depressed rats are less depressed, but you can probably read more about that deeper in the article. Hearing loss. These studies were done in rats again, and the ginkgo biloba actually protected the neural tube cochlear cells um, by reducing oxidative stress. So basically it prevented um, hearing loss related to oxidative stress. And you probably don't want to know what they were doing to oxidatively stress these poor rats. Okay, and here's the last thing they, they were studying is uh, med medullar ischemia in rats. And they found that ginkgo biloba had a protective effect on, on these uh, medullar tissue lesions um, caused by ischemia. So... <laughs> Weird things, a lot of weird things, studying rats, but they found so many amazing protective effects that it really suggests that ginkgo biloba can uh, really help a number of things. Let's see, what else does this study have? Oh, it talks a bit about the, um, 
let's see, we're talking a bit about the compounds, components of ginkgo biloba here. You got your ginkgo lights A, B, and C, and in general they decrease the level of reoxygen of reactive oxygen species. Um, they can impact or reduce the release of LDH and a variety of other pathways and things are also influenced by that. There's camphorol and uh, this can, interestingly enough, one of the things that I find interesting in this is that it can inhibit the serotonin degradation by MAO. So maybe that's one of the reasons the rats were less depressed. Fascinating stuff here. Also influences a variety of other proteins and looks like genes and helps eliminate free radicals just with the camphorol. Quercetin is another component and that looks like it inhibits also the degradation of serotonin by MAO. So more of that antidepressant effect there. Uh, also decreasing lipid peroxidation and uh, eliminating free radicals and activating and deactivating various other things. Okay, and then billow, ooh, billow bilide, <laughs> um, and that is able to decrease reactive oxygen species. Uh, reactive, excuse me, that's able to decrease the expression of reactive species caused by hydrogen peroxide. And yeah, it basically inhibits degradation of of membrane phospholipids. Um, looks like it has a, increases cellular proliferation of neurons in the hippocampus. So that's been found to have some interesting effects. Isohamnetin is the last thing in this little chart here and it talks about how that decreases cellular death and fragmentation of DNA and stops cells from apoptosis, basically d cell death. Um, and a variety of other things involving liberation of cytokines and activating different proteins and genes. So, boy, these components are, are pretty fierce. So you can see why they would be having effects. So basically, in all the studies of this review, it was also very um, possible to verify that there was no significant adverse effects by the use of ginkgo biloba itself. I'm sure all the things that they were doing to those poor rats wasn't good and probably were bad, but the ginkgo biloba didn't seem to make anything or anybody worse. Um, so their conclusion was that ginkgo biloba, as well as its extract, has beneficial properties for promoting and managing health because of wide-ranging anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties and that many diseases that are caused by oxidative stress and have reached epidemic of proportions worldwide so it's really necessary to find accessible and effective alternatives uh, that may be affordable and uh, can help actually minimize risk factors for for several of these diseases and possibly even contribute or be used as an adjuvant to treatment so they're really saying that from their research it looks like ginkgo biloba can be helpful in a variety of disease states. Now it is to be noted that at very high concentrations um, ginkgo biloba has found to be slightly liver toxic but at all lower and more normal doses it seems to be very beneficial around everything. So like so much in the world dose Dose, dose, don't dose too much. Dose the right amount and it'll be helpful. I mean, you can drink enough water to kill yourself. So you can take too much ginkgo biloba. But if you don't take too much, it's probably going to do you good. And that's the conclusion I come up with from reading these fascinating um, review of these 54 some, I believe it was, articles. Yeah, okay, it was a review of 54 studies in the end done by these Brazilian researchers. Uh, I thought it was fascinating and I just wanted to share it with you, so I hope you found it fascinating too. And if not, well, then you've got my little pretty pictures flashing around in the background to watch. <laughs>
<laughs> so <laughs> let's uh let's call that that. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.